Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. I pray that you're walking in all of the wonderful positive aspects of serving the Lord. You know, so often when we talk about serving the Lord, we talk about what we can't do. You know, a servant of the Lord don't go to the club. It doesn't drink. It doesn't lie. We don't do this. We don't do that. We, we describe our walk with the Lord uh, from a negative aspect. But my Lord today, isn't it wonderful to be born again and to just think about all of the wonderful things that we get to do in serving Jesus. You get to sleep at night and to rest well. You get to live every day knowing that uh, that the Lord is in control. You go to bed knowing that if you don't wake up the next morning, everything will be all right. You get to live your life and enjoy life without having to be all to, to take it in mind altering drugs, any substance that will help you enjoy. You, you get to, to live and to be happy with your wife, enjoy the wife of, of your youth and your children. You get to live a life when you're taking care of yourself and, and, and feeding your body the right things and living lifestyles that reduce stress. Now listen to me, that reduce stress. Oh my, stress, nothing as path, is as pathological as stress. Many of the conditions that people have in their bodies today is because they're stressed out. Jesus said that in the last days men's hearts would fail them for fear, for anxiety, and for looking upon the things that are coming upon this earth. Well, the Bible said that the God of the Bible gives his well-beloved rest. He gives us sleep. We get to live this life knowing that we're in his arms. We get to, listen, we have a plan, a giving plan, an investment plan that's much more powerful than playing the lottery or doing something illegal. It's called giving your tithe, giving your offerings, doing what God would have you to do and learning about the God of the Bible. You get to live your life according to the scripture. The Bible says he that will love life and see good days, just keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips that they speak no guile. The Bible teaches you how to uh, not be a busybody in other men's battles. I mean, this is just a good life. And I am so grateful for the Lord allowing me to discover this wonderful life. You know, oftentimes, and I just want to share this with you, then I'm going to do my invite. But oftentimes people say that when they get to heaven, they're going to talk to the Lord. They're going to tell him about their troubles and tell him how they made it over. And they're going to count, we're going to recount all of the things that they went through for the Lord. Well, I'm telling you, and, and, and I get that. But when I get there, my biggest question, I, 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 Brother Gary, I already know my biggest question that I'm going to ask the Lord. And I'm going to, here's my question. Here's my question, my friends. I'm going to ask the Lord, Lord, why me? Why me? What? Why? Why did you reach down and show me such love at the tender age of 16 that you that I that I that, that, that called me to respond to you reaching out to me? Why did you choose me to fill me with the Holy Spirit at an early age in life? And you kept me on the college campus. You kept me in high school. You kept me. You watched over me. You gave me a wonderful wife. You've given me wonderful children. You've been good to me. I'm not saying that I've had a life of just uh, where I've just slept on a bed of ease or with every rose come thorns. But my friends. Let me tell you, I'm, I'm like the uh, the song today. Uh, the, the, the songwriter said, I, I gave him my old filthy garments. And he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven. That's why I'm happy tonight. When I look at my relationship with Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, he got the short end of the stick because he all he got was me. But all I got was him.
my God. And I'm sitting here today happy to have Jesus operating on the inside. Aren't you glad that you know the Lord? Aren't you glad that you're born again today? Praise the Lord. Don't ever let the devil give you a negative perspective of salvation. I was watching a little bit. I didn't, I haven't seen the whole thing yet, so I'm not going to comment very much on it. But one of the, our leading uh, gospel singers, this guy, he's at it again. He was on someone's podcast. And I'm amazed at the number of Christians who, when they get invited on a podcast or something uh, that the world is presenting, that they get on and all they do is slam the church. And criticize the church and criticize church people and criticize Christianity and call us all judgmental. And what really surprises me, and this is what really surprises me, is that they can do all those things and you Christians out there still support them. They come to town in the concert, you show up. They drop a new project, you buy it. I listen, I'm not supporting anyone who is who gets before the loss, who gets before the wicked. And all they do is criticize the church. Brother Gary, I'm, 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 I don't know why some of these artists won't just go. How about just go rock and roll? I mean, you when you sing, you. You dance like you're in the club. You move like you're in the club. You got all of the latest moves. I mean, let me give you bravo. Bravo, you dance better than Michael Jackson. How about that? If I had Jackson in my pocket, I'd give him to you. You're the man. You're the man. You can do all that stuff with your pants hanging off your rear end as you sing God's gospel. What in the world is going on? So, yeah, 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 I'm talking about it. I can't help, can't help but talk about it. I'm amazed at the number of people who name the name of Christ and all they got to say about Christ and Christ's church is something negative. Well, I'm glad to be saved. I'm glad to be in Jesus. I'm glad to be on the Lord's side. I'm glad to be serving the God of the Bible. I want to read something to you. Take it from Matthew's gospel chapter not Matthew, Luke's gospel, chapter number 17. The Bible says in, with the 20th verse, and when he was demanded <laughs> of the Pharisees, when the, listen, they want to know when the kingdom of God should come. So they demanded him, when is the kingdom coming? And he answered and said unto them, now listen to this. He said, the kingdom of God cometh not with observations. He, he says, the kingdom cometh not with observations. That is the kingdom right now at this time, at this time, it didn't come with a great outward display. It didn't come with outward signs and oh, you, you, it, it's not all in the sky yet. You know, Jesus says when he returns as the lightning shineth in the east, uh, flasheth in the east, so shall it uh, shine to the west and all of that. That's, that's in the culmination of things. But Jesus said concerning his coming, he says, listen, the kingdom of God cometh not with observations. The kingdom of God is not showing up like a great big political party coming to town in a big rally. He says, neither shall they say low here or low there for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Thank you, Lord. The, the presence of the King, the presence of King Jesus on the inside of us is the proof that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is on earth. The kingdom of God, my friends, is in you. It's in me. And we're, we're walking this thing out. We're living this thing. And you'll thank God. Be grateful for being a part of the Lord's kingdom. I'm glad that I am one of them. The late Andre Crouch did a song that has uh, wrote a song that has uh, greatly af uh, affected me. It blessed me down through the years. The name of the song was living this kind of life. Living this kind of life, he says, it gets sweeter and sweeter day by day. Living this kind of life, everything's new and the old just pass away. And he says, happy days are here again. I got a brand new family of friends and I'm thankful. 
Ever since I met Jesus Christ, I've been living this kind of life. My friends, I love this kind of life. The born again life, the life of serving Jesus Christ. And I pray that you enjoy Jesus. I pray that as you are on your way to heaven, do you hear me today? I pray that you are enjoying the trip. And I'm really speaking right now to some of my friends who are cultural warriors. Those of us who stand against, we fight for the lives of the unborn and we're not going to change. We fight, praise God. We push back against all things LGBTQ plus and we're not going to change. We believe that drag uh, queen story time is not a good thing. Yes, we believe that books in and of themselves are not sacred. It is the content on the pages. And yes, some books need to be banned or at least taken off the shelves where little children cannot get their hands on them. And we're not going to change. No, we don't believe that there should be uh, tampons in boys' bathrooms, and no, we do not believe that men should be able to participate in women's sports, and no, we're not going to participate and call a man Susie just because he wants us to when you know that that's, that, that, that's, that's Joe standing there. So listen, no, we're not going to buy that foolishness. Why? Because we have the kingdom of heaven operating on the inside of us. Now don't get me started. I feel the preacher. I, f I feel like I'm going from being happy in Jesus to getting ready to fight for Jesus for a minute here. <laughs> Uh, you know it, you know it, you know it. But I want to say to the warriors out there, those who are fighting this godless culture, and you know the, the culture of warriors in Christ, we're constantly swimming upstream. The devil tries to call us crazy. Many of us, are, 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 we're accused of, uh, of uh, turning our back on our own race. I don't know why you would accuse a man for turning his back on his own race when the man is fighting for his own race to be born. And I hear people tell me all the time, they said, wouldn't you know, there are other issues. It's not for that baby that's been aborted. And when you consider the millions of babies, do you think, do you think that the God of the Bible is going to just look the other way? Do you think that there's no day of reckoning when the Bible is specific? We're not to shed innocent blood. Do you think that God looks at this and puts it low on the list of priorities? Many preachers now, many of you guys, you won't preach against the slaughter of the unborn. But you're preaching uh, social justice. I have a question. I've asked this question before. I'll ask it again. Nobody's answered me. What is social justice? And here's the follow up. And does it apply to the unborn? I don't know how you can uh, talk about social justice, but barely talk about the, the, the injustice that's taking place on the very least of these. The newborns aren't the very least of these. The very least of these are the unborn. Unborns are human also. And yet many have nothing to say about that. Or you could just step over that. Or you moved on from that. But God hasn't. God hasn't. And I'll tell you who else hasn't moved on uh, from slaughtering the unborn. The devil. The devil. And the people. The, the eugenicists. The, the depopulation folk. Coupled with their allies, the LBGTQ plus community, they hadn't moved on. They're doing everything they can uh, through medicine, through through false advertising to lure people into the trap. No believer should fall for that. I got a rule. Anything that any politician tries to push toward you and they can't tell you what it is. Or they, they refuse to call it what it is. You shouldn't believe them. You shouldn't trust them. You shouldn't trust them. Since when has abortion been an I uh, issue of reproductive rights? There is no reproduction in abortion. Look, at, look the word up. Uh, how about this? Go online and look up the procedure. There's no, there's no reproduction. No one is reproduced. 
Lives are snuffed out. My chief of staff, Superintendent Tommy Eugene Quick, said something that I thought was profound. He said the opposite of pro-life is not pro-choice. And he's so right. He said the opposite of pro-life is death. Is death. And I'll tell you, of all the times that I've been down to the abortion clinic and stood there and fought for the lives of the unborn, I never once, and, 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 and the name of this particular clinic where we were, and Gary, I don't know why I'm even talking about this, but the name of this particular clinic where we were, is, and I generally don't give the name, but it has choice in it, women's choice, blah, 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 okay? I never once saw the people who work there walk a lady out and smile at her and hug her, embrace her, and bid her Godspeed, good luck, see you later, whatever, when the lady chose to keep the baby. At that abortion clinic, they never once celebrated the choice to keep the baby. But these people claim to be pro-choice. No, the only choice they celebrate is the extermination of that human life. To shed that innocent blood is satanic at its core. Yes, I said it. And we will not back away from it at all. And I want to say to the believer out there, you can't, you can't look the other, other way with this. You can't, you can't uh, 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 try to reduce this. You can't try to minimize this. You know, there are other issues. Not if you're the one aborted. Not if you're the one aborted. There's no other issue. And, you know, we talk, we talk about racism. We talk about all these other things. I mean, but you can't, you can't even uh, uh, have racism performed on you. You can't have, you know, you can't, you can't be denied. You can't go up against this uh, 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 systemic racism and all these titles that we throw out. You can't go against any of those things if, if you're not born. And I don't understand how that simple fact can be overlooked. But I'm here to tell you, my friends, those who are warriors out there, I want to give you a word of encouragement. I know that as we near the coming of the Lord, that the battles are intensifying. Oh my, they're, they're, they're turning up the heat. But you know what? God is moving by his spirit, moving throughout the world. Signs and wonders God is using. You just keep that prayer going and just say to the Lord, Move, O oh God, in me. Now, I want to invite you tonight to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And in full disclosure, uh, tonight I will not be here. I will, I'm in, uh, by the time you see this, I will be in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, at the General Council of Pastors and Elders of the Church of God in Christ, attending the Shepherds Conference and uh, the Elders Academy and uh, August the 20th through the 23rd. We're, we're there uh, with the saints, with the elders out there. But, but, but we are going to have a move of God right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And the Lord willing, the Lord willing, yours truly will be in place back in the pulpit this coming Sunday. As you know, we're in this uh, campaign season. I am campaigning for the general board of the Church of God in Christ. And the, 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 uh, this campaign season takes me here, takes me there. Um, and, uh, we're, we're reaching out and, uh, 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 speaking to people and, and, and explaining our why, why God has us doing this at this time. And I solicit your prayers. I, I pray that you would keep me lifted, keep my family lifted, uh, 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 keep us, uh, that God will keep me strong and that God will keep me healthy. And I want to praise God. We have a prayer team going on here at the upper room. Let me tell you something. 
They are praying for me. They're gathering on Tuesdays and calling up heaven and lifting up the uh, me. They're praying for my family. They're praying for our health, our strength, They're praying for the church. They're praying. Nothing happens without prayer. I need you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. If God puts it on your heart to send me an offering to help me do this, that's wonderful. But if not, pray for me. Talk to, to God. Talk to God. Bombard heaven. Call my whole name. Patrick Lane wouldn't see you. Ask the Lord. God help him. God touch him. And most importantly, Lord, let your will be done in his life. My friends, I submit everything to the will of the Lord. And I give the God of the Bible no ultimatums. You know, well, Lord, if you don't, if you don't let this work out, then Lord, I'm not going to. Oh, no, man. Let me tell you something. I'm going to serve Jesus till the day I die. <laughs> I'm convinced. I'm going to heaven, man. I'm going to heaven. I'm going to heaven one day. And I'm going to see my Savior face to face. And I'm going to see my mother. And I'm going to see others that I long to see. So I'm excited. I love Jesus Christ. I appreciate you uh, standing by me. I appreciate your, your prayers. I have the greatest congregation in the world. I thank God for the members of the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And often I mention them, and I fail to mention, and it's just charge it to my, heart, my head, I fail to mention North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction. Thank God for the jurisdiction that the Lord has blessed me to preside over. There are some mighty movers and shakers in the jurisdiction and they're praying for me. I thank God for my, uh, the supervisor of the women's department of North Carolina third ecclesiastical jurisdiction, Mother Beverly DeJanae. What a wonderful woman of God to work with. She's doing a fantastic job. And, uh, you know, uh, some of the guys, they, 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 uh, and, and it, it is cool. They refer to their wives as their secret weapon. Well, I want to refer to mine as my not so secret weapon. Pamela is precious and she's a blessing to me. So here we are. We're excited about what God is doing. The word of God is going to be preached here tonight. You, and so I want to invite you to join, to come to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. Praise the Lord. Whether it's me or someone preaching in on my behalf, standing in our stead, preaching the gospel, they're going to lay out the scripture. And you are going to be blessed. God bless you. Keep me in your prayers. Thanks.